Ladies and gentlemen, let us join together as we blend our energy across the world with each other and we join with the power that is God. Father God, Great Spirit, what a joy it is to be able to come into your presence, to be among those of a like mind, of a shared of opinion, and those who have a knowledge that the love of God exists for all. Father God, we come together in celebration of what it is to be spirit and what it is to be in your loving care. For our service today, we simply invite your presence, which we know is always there. With open hearts and open minds, we invite our loved ones who have gone back home to you, that we may all be inspired by their presence and uplifted by their love. May all here, sitting in their own homes, be touched by your love and by the presence and power of the spirit world. Amen. We are now coming to the reading and Suzanne has asked me to choose a reading and that will be followed by her address. And the reading that I have chosen for today is a um, maybe a quote, maybe a poem, I don't know, but I found it's very suitable for tonight's divine service. And um, it is from Charles Chaplin and it's called as I began to love myself. As I began to love myself, I found that anguish and emotional suffering are only warning signs that I was living against my own truth. Today I know this is authenticity. As I began to love myself, I understood how much it can offend somebody as I try to force my desires on this person even though I knew the time was not right and the person was not ready for it, and even though this person was me. Today, I call it respect. As I began to love myself, I stopped craving for a different life, and I could see that everything that surrounded me was inviting me to grow. Today, I call it majority. As I began to love myself, I understood that at any circumstance, I'm in the right place at the right time and everything happens at the exactly right moment so I could be calm. Today, I call it self-confidence. As I began to love myself, I quit stealing my own time and I stopped designing huge projects for the future. Today, I only do what brings me joy and happiness, things I love to do and that make my heart cheer. And I do them in my own way and in my own rhythm. Today, I call it simplicity. As I began to love myself, I freed myself of anything that is not good for my health, food, people, things, situations, and everything that drew me down and away from myself. At first, I called this attitude a healthy egoism. Today, I know it is love of oneself. As I began to love myself, I quit trying to always be right. And ever since, I was wrong less of the time. Today, I discovered that is modesty. As I began to love myself, I refused to go on living in the past and worry about the future. Now I only live for the moment where everything is happening. Today I live each day by day and I call it fulfillment. As I began to love myself, I recognized that my mind can disturb me and can make me sick. But as I connected it to my heart, my mind became a valuable ally. Today I call this connection wisdom of the heart. We no longer need to fear arguments, confrontations, 
or any kind of problems with ourselves or others. Even stars collide and out of their crashing, new worlds are born. Today I know that is life. Thank you, Karen. And I have to say, I asked Karen to do the reading because I do love the, the inspiration that goes on in the spirit world as a service is put together with all of its different elements, which somehow seem to come together. Because just before I started to prepare for today, and I was asking for that inspiration of what would be discussed, it was indeed eternal progress open to every human soul. And the reading that Karen has given us is exactly that. As one person begins to love themselves, so they change, they transform beyond recognition and bring into their life very simply peace and love and acceptance as I begin to love myself. What a difficult phrase that is, because most of us have not been brought up to love ourselves at all. We've been brought up to perhaps even not like ourselves very much, to continue to strive, to try to achieve things, to try and compensate for perhaps the lack of love that we have for ourselves. And I know people, even when we start to talk of liking ourselves, they find that incredibly difficult. And it's odd, isn't it? Because when we are born into this world, we are that combination of a physical body and a spirit form. And as from a very young age, our character begins to form, the spirit side of us doesn't seem to have a great deal of influence. And it is those who we come into contact with in our early years who shape and form our belief structure, which again helps to form our character. And so it is the physical elements and the human people in our lives that tend to shape us. And it is the human people around us who don't necessarily encourage us to love ourselves. And yet we know that our spirit is all love. And so somehow we have the task in this physical life, we have the task of living in a physical body, living in a physical world, surrounded by people, surrounded by all the material problems. And somehow we have the task of making space and allowing our spirit to have a greater say as we go through our lives. And for many, it can be a conflict because living in a material world, we want certain things, things that perhaps our spirit neither wants nor needs. And yet, surrounded by materialism, we are encouraged and we strive to want material things. And it is only when we get to a point in our lives where we recognize the greatness of our own spirit, that we can start to put down some of our material wants. We still have our needs, but we can begin to put down some of our wants as our spirit starts to perhaps take over in the driving seat and our spirit starts to determine more and more of what we do with our lives. But if we don't learn to love ourselves, despite the influence that our spirit has, we still continue to judge ourselves and to criticize ourselves and to find ourselves wanting, to find ourselves coming short in some way. And as we do that to ourselves, then it's so very easy to do that 
to others. And so we have to work in both places. If we are going to love ourselves and we're going to try to be the best that we can be while we are here, but still love ourselves, then we have to afford others the same. And so begins our growth. We are very aware from the teachings of our spiritualist helpers and guides going right back. We're very aware that our purpose in coming into this earth is to spiritually progress. And that's a very easy thing to say, isn't it? You've come here to progress, get on with it. Well, how do we do that? We don't know what our starting point is. We cannot possibly measure ourselves. And yet we know that somehow we are supposed to spiritually progress. You might have a list of things that would help you. And it might have, as our opening song said, be kind to others. You might have number two, do more than be kind to others, give service to others. You might have number three, your parents probably told you, don't be selfish, you must put others first. And our list of how to progress often involves what we do for others. And it doesn't involve what we do for ourselves. And yet the moment we stop and we take a breath and we connect with our own energy and we connect to the power that is God. In that moment, we invite a change. Suddenly, we don't need any lists. We come into the presence of being. And when we are in the presence of being, we don't need to try to love. Somehow we just feel love. We don't need to force compassion. Suddenly we have compassion. We don't feel judgment. We don't feel inferior. We suddenly just feel both at peace and we feel a sense of joy. And so perhaps our list needs to be a very simple one. Perhaps it should be number one, let go of your material concerns. Let go of your feelings of insecurity and your feelings of inferiority. Embrace yourself. Embrace your spirit. Embrace the power of God. Because as we move our attention and we move our focus into that energy that is both within us and around us, that energy that is God. We are transformed and there is nothing to fight. And there is also nothing to fear. And our teachers, such as Silver Birch, constantly tell us that there is nothing to fear. And while we stay focused on the material world, it appears that there is everything to fear. Yet when we blend with that spirit part of us, we genuinely feel a 
a silver birch is right and there is nothing to fear. And if you think about it from the perspective of the spirit world, when they draw close to us, lucky for us, they don't see us in our physicality. They don't see us in our clothes, which over the past year is probably a very good thing because by staying at home, we're probably not the best dressed. They don't see that. They don't see our sagging skin and our physicality. They see our energy. They see our light. They see our colours. They feel the vibration, our sound. And when we are feeling down, and we don't like ourselves, and if we don't like ourselves, we don't usually like the world very much either, then while our spirit light might be very, very bright, might be a hue of beautiful colours. It is surrounded by clouds. It is surrounded by darkness of anxiety and upset. And yet when we connect, that darkness goes away and our colours shine ever brighter and our light and our radiance is there for the spirit world to see. And so I wonder if we could start to just have a sense, because we cannot measure, but if we could have a sense of how bright are my lights today? What colours am I wearing today in my energy? Am I as radiant and bright as I could be? Or am I clouded by my thoughts and my fears? and my worries for this world. And in that moment, if we just take a breath and we just pause and we just allow ourselves to become aware of the power of God, in that moment we do become brighter. In that moment our fear dissipates. In that moment we become more radiant. The person next to you might not notice, but the spirit world notice, for they see us as we truly are. And so let us take from that wonderful reading, that sense of, do I love myself? Can I love myself? How much can I love myself? Can I love myself enough to let go of all that conditioning that has been put upon me by living in a physical world and having a material life? Can I really allow that to lessen so that my spirit is able to do the work that it came here to do? so that my lights may be a little brighter today than they were tomorrow, than they were yesterday. May they become ever brighter. Because when we touch that place of spirit, we don't have bad thoughts. We don't think horrible things of each other. We're not jealous. We're not insecure. We're very comfortable within ourselves. And that's what we can strive to be on a daily basis. And of course, one of the blessings of being a spiritualist is that as we make this journey and as we try to allow our light to get a little bit brighter, we know that in that endeavour, that we are not alone. And we know that we have that wonderful support that exists, not just in this world, but also from the spirit world also, who rejoice with every hang up that we put down, they celebrate. 
every extra line we gain on our face through laughter or through smiling with joy. They celebrate. For they want us to be able to move away from the limitations of fear and to move into the freedom of what the knowledge of spiritualism should give us. The freedom to be able to live our lives without limiting ourselves, but with the knowledge that we are here to have this physical experience and yet to also be able to express our spirit. And so when you think of it from that perspective, you came here to earth as a little shining light. And your sole purpose was that by the end of this journey, you would simply shine a little brighter. And that's all you have to do. It sounds very simple, doesn't it? And in many ways, it is. But it is a challenge. And it is a challenge that each of us, somewhere along the line, it's a challenge that we've all signed up for. And so tomorrow, when you roll out of bed, you go to grab your clothes. Just have a think to yourself. How bright am I today? Am I clouded by what's going on around me? Or am I able to allow my light to dissipate the clouds that are in my life so that I might shine a little brighter? And as I shine a little brighter, I help others to do so too. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let us just blend our energy together one more time. Father God, Great Spirit, we thank you so much for your presence this evening. And we know that your presence is always there. And it is simply up to us to take a moment to take a breath and to find you within ourselves. As we disperse from our meeting this evening, we send our love to the spirit world for all that they do for us. And we simply ask that you and they continue to be with us, to help us and to guide us as each of us tries to shine our light a little brighter in your name. Amen.